Welcome to Shaping Your Sound, where we explore the different types of effects used in audio production. This time, we're getting into compression. Compressors reduce the difference between the loud and quiet parts of audio. They can bring up the quiet parts of a vocal so that it cuts through a loud mix. They can add sustain to instruments with dynamic transients. And they can beef up your drums. Compressors are part of the dynamics processor family, which includes limiters, gates, expanders, maximizers, deessers, and levelers. All of these make automatic adjustments to the volume of audio signals. For an audio engineer, few tools are as essential as compression. Understanding and mastering dynamics processing is the only way you'll be able to match the energy, impact, and loudness of commercial mixes. Dynamic range is the technical term for the difference between the quietest and loudest parts of an audio signal or recording. A compressor reduces the dynamic range by bringing the peaks of the audio closer to the quiet parts and creating a more consistent level overall. Look what happens if we now boost the overall level of this waveform and compare it to the original. The peaks are back where they started, but the quieter sections have got louder. A compressor is an automatic volume control. One way to understand what a compressor is doing is to recreate its effect manually. Let's look at this vocal recording. But we're here to stay. We just let the time take us away. Wish I could make the clock freeze. Exactly what my heart needs. This is a fairly even performance. The vocal has been well recorded and the singer has good mic technique. But you can see from the waveform that there's a noticeable difference between the louder and quieter sections. And if we listen to the vocal in the context of a loud modern mix, some of the words will get lost. I could manually adjust the levels throughout this recording using clip gain. Let's use the waveform to visually select the louder parts and reduce their levels to match the quieter parts. Now everything is even, I could boost the level of the whole clip to match the original loud parts. Let's have a listen to this now in the mix. But we're here to stay. We just let the time take us away. Wish I could make the clock freeze. Exactly what my heart needs. The whole verse is now more forward and defined in the mix. Now in reality, I'd want smoother changes, so I could have drawn in ramps or even tried to ride the fader and capture volume automation in real time. But a much quicker way to get the same results is to use a compressor. A compressor works similarly to volume automation. But instead of needing manual adjustment, it responds automatically to the audio signal, reducing the level whenever it crosses a loudness threshold. But you're the one Compressors have two main parameters, threshold and ratio. Got the Pro Tools Pro compressor running here, and I've got my threshold set to zero and the ratio set to one, which means no compression happens. In the meter here, you can see a bouncing ball animation that shows the signal as it's coming through. And that will obviously show us a lot more information when we start to compress the signal. If I bring the threshold down, you see we get this line here that indicates the threshold above which compression will start to happen. Right now, nothing's happening because my ratio is set to one. But as I bring the ratio up, everything above that threshold line is gonna to start to get brought down in level. And the higher the ratio, the more it's gonna be brought down. So the ball is showing us how much the signal is being brought down and also the gain reduction meter here showing us that information. We also see that in the Pro Tools metering here in the mixer and in the edit window. So right now with these settings we're pushing the compressor very hard and everything's getting quite flattened. So I'm going to ease back the threshold, get my ratio down. 
is to get a bit more of a subtle compression. So just those loud bits are being brought down. Next, I'm gonna use the makeup gain, which brings the level of the whole signal back up again. You can see that my gain reduction is kind of hovering around six, six to eight dB. So we'll probably bring up the makeup gain similar amount. Somewhere like that. We bypassed the hear the signal before. And with compression, but you're the one I want to hold. You're my shelter from the cold. I feel it inside. So the compressor is leveling out our vocal. And by bringing down the louder parts, it's creating headroom that we can use to boost the overall level of the track. The attack parameter on a compressor adjusts how quickly it responds when the level crosses the threshold. The way you set the attack time depends on the source material and the results that you want. Let's try out some different attack times on this drum machine track. So with a very fast attack time, you can hear the transients get immediately pulled and we get the most compression, but it can sound a little bit unnatural. We push the attack time up. You can hear some of the sharp transients like that snare are now preserved, they come through we get the original sound a little bit more dynamically. And with a longer attack time, you can get smooth results on other instruments like vocals. But here with all these short transients, we effectively never trigger the compressor and we get no compression. Release time on a compressor sets how long it takes for volume reduction to return to zero after the signal falls below the threshold. But we're here to stay. We just let the time take us away. A short release gives you the most volume leveling, allowing you to boost those quiet sections. If you use a longer release time, the results can be a bit more subtle. But if you go too far and set the release too long, then the compressor will never recover between the peaks and you end up just making the whole track quieter. A shorter attack time with a longer release time can be used to create sustain in instruments with a dynamic transient, like this piano part. Let's bring the threshold down to catch those transients. And then the trick here is to try and match the release time roughly to the gap between the notes. And we'll bring up the makeup gain. So with this longer release time, the volume rises at the same rate as the instrument decays, resulting in a level sustained note. Many classic compressor models have a fixed threshold setting and instead use an input level control to push the signal into the compression zone. Plugins inspired by these devices often add their own tone character to the sound as well as changing the dynamics. The Smack plugin that comes with Pro Tools is inspired by one of the most popular outboard effects units of all time, which itself emulates a number of classic compressors and leveling amplifiers. I've got it here on my drum bus see that as I wind up the input level, both increases the amount of compression and lifts the overall level of the track. Many compressors have a sidechain function. This allows you to trigger the compressor with an altered version of the source signal, or even a completely different signal from somewhere else. This compressor on my drum bus is getting heavily triggered by the kick and that's causing the kick to lose a lot of its weight and also to duck the rest of the drum. I use the side chain to filter off the low end. Now the kick is no longer triggering the detection circuit. It passes through and doesn't affect the rest of the drums. So I can concentrate on compressing the other drums.
Common trick in dance music is to use the kick track as the external trigger for other tracks or even the whole mix. To explore this technique, check out our video linked below. As well as treating individual tracks and instruments, it's a common mixing technique to use compressors on groups of tracks like drums or on your final mix. This can be effective in making the different elements of your mix sound like they're all part of a whole. This is sometimes described as glue compression. The Impact plugin that comes with Pro Tools is a classic console style mix bus compressor. I've got it inserted here on my drums and bass mix bus, which includes my drum machine, some percussion tracks and an 808 bass. We listen to it with the plugin bypassed. You can hear that the different components don't quite gel together. The kick drum sticks out, so does the 808, and the snares kind of sit a little bit back in the mix, they're a bit lifeless. Let's see what happens when we bring in the plugin. With the plug-in in, everything just gets subtly tightened up, begins to start acting like a cohesive whole. The kicks are slightly more controlled, the snares come forward. Let's try putting the impact plug-in on the final mix bus of our track. Just a subtle amount of final stage compression can be the finishing touch that brings your mix together. It also gives you a little more headroom that you can use to make your mix a little bit louder. Yeah. 